So Apple just released a brand new Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra chip, definitely the most powerful Apple Silicon chip that's been released so far, and I bought it. And today I'm going to be testing out 13 different games running on this device. We're going to be looking at native games as well as Windows games being run through crossover translation layer and seeing whether this machine is capable of high-end AAA gaming. So the brand new Mac Studio that we're testing today has 28 CPU cores, 60 GPU cores, a 32 core neural engine, 96 gigabytes of unified memory and one terabyte of solid state drive space. And yes, this thing is an absolute beast and obviously it's designed for high-end workloads loads and it's not really made for gaming. However, you might be pleasantly surprised at how well natively optimized Mac games can actually work and take advantage of all of this power and how even Windows games running through multiple translation layers can actually be brute forced into working pretty well on this very high end hardware. So the first game we're looking at is Death Stranding. So this is one of the most impressive native Mac ports that we have, able to be played even on the lowly iPhone, scaled up all the way to the M3 Ultra. So the game manages to run really well on 4K at default graphic settings. I actually turned off Metal FX, so we're not using any kind of upscaling here. Frame rate is hovering around the 90 to 100 or so FPS when we are walking around this outdoor area. When we've got close-ups of the main character Sam, the frame rate dips a little bit to about 80, but it's still pretty impressive. This is native 4k after all it's barely using any ram only about 9.6 gigabytes five gigabytes of which are vram and it's barely making mac heat up we're only getting about 60 degrees on the cpu and gpu cores so next up we're looking at x-plane 12. so we don't have microsoft flight simulator compatibility on the mac at all even through translation layers but we do have a very competent flight simulator x-plane 12 which is a native arm mac port and it's definitely one of the most visually impressive games that you can play on a Mac. So it doesn't matter what settings you use, the frame rate cap is locked to the screen refresh rate. Frame rate basically depends on what view you're using. I suspect that some of the heat distortion effects that come from looking at the back of the plane affect frame rate quite a lot because it can hit 60 quite easily, but I'm not sure that many people play flight simulators from a third person view. So what I also tried is turning up all of the graphical sliders onto max, and then frame rate would basically tank down to the 20 FPS range so there's definitely still a bit more performance that we can squeeze out of this game with better hardware. So next up we're looking at Lies of P which is the Dark Souls like Pinocchio steampunk inspired game and this is another one of the impressively optimized Apple Silicon Mac ports. Him running the game at the high graphics preset and we have Metal FX turned on to highest quality mode and we're hitting a decent 60 to 70 FPS at 4k. However I also experimented with turning Metal FX upscaling off and we're very close to hitting 4k at native resolution even in combat scenes. So for this game I'd say that Metal effects is not particularly necessary. If you're playing on a 60 hertz screen, you can play this at 4K high on the M3 Ultra just fine. So next up, we're looking at a third person adventuring puzzling classic, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So macOS has been blessed by excellent Mac ports of the last three games in the series, also known as the Definitive Survivor Trilogy. And although this is the latest entry in the series, it doesn't actually make use of some of the newer features like Metal FX, but it still manages to look really good. So this is running at 4K high and we're hitting that 60 to 70 FPS mark. Still looking amazing, even though this game came out in 2018. Next, we're looking at StarCraft 2. So this is another older macOS port, of course. And this was requested by user Marcos in one of my live streams. Here, what I've done is I've loaded up a 4v4 map. So pretty much the biggest game that you're gonna play on StarCraft 2. And what I'm doing is I'm running this at 4K at medium settings. So because this port is quite old, we don't have the metal HUD. We have the in-game frame rate counter instead. That's because this game uses OpenGL. And in theory, this could probably work a lot better if it had a metal port. So once tons of units come on screen, we're coming down to about 60 FPS. If you wanted to guarantee 60, just put this onto low settings and probably turn the resolution down and you'll be fine to play this game competitively online. So next we're looking at huge multiplayer online game War Thunder. So this does have a Mac port, so I'm playing a version from Steam here. And we're running this at 1440p on high. So we're easily hitting that 150 to 200 FPS mark. I could also probably run this easily at 4K at these settings. So what's cool is that this is still one of the most popular online multiplayer games that still work on a Mac. This game still gets constant updates, so it's still going strong. And one thing I didn't realize is that there are also land battles as well. Embarrassingly, 
me. I didn't know that there was this kind of World of Tanks style game also hidden within War Thunder. This is also pretty fun too and here on the land battles are getting a lower frame rate of about 130 FPS at 1440p high, running great on the M3 Ultra. So next we're looking at Resident Evil 2 Remake. So this is basically the latest game in the series that's been ported natively to the Mac and it looks fantastic as well. So a lot of care has been taken into getting this working as well as possible on Apple Silicon hardware, including the ability to scale this down all the way to an iPhone, iPad, as well as lower end Apple Silicon Macs as well. Here on the M3 Ultra, I'm able to run this at 4K high settings with image quality set to 100%. And because we were getting over 60 FPS, we're actually hitting about 80 or 90, I've turned Metal FX off. So no upscaling is involved here, it's native 4K. And basically the entire Resident Evil series that have been natively ported to Mac all work fantastically. So next we're looking at the massively multiplayer online game, Final Fantasy XIV. So technically this has a Mac port. However, in reality, this is actually the Windows game wrapped up in a bottle so Mac players are already playing the Windows version of the game and that's why it's probably better to run using a community launcher called 14 on Mac. This has been maintained by the community and contains all of the latest Windows game fixes. And one big innovation is the fact that it's one of the first projects to make use of DXMT, the DirectX 2 Metal Translation Layer that's open source and manages to perform a lot better than previous graphics translation layers like DXVK and even D3D Metal. And I know that starting areas aren't the best way to test out game performance, but we are able to run these areas at 4K with dynamic resolution turned off at about 80 or 90 FPS, which is probably more than enough for playing on a Mac. So next we're looking at Metro Exodus. So this is an excellent Mac port of the AAA first person campaign shooter game, looking amazing on Mac hardware. This is a moody atmospheric game with a really good single player campaign, running very nicely at 4K ultra settings at over 100 FPS. However, since this Mac port came out, they also released an enhanced edition, but this isn't available on Mac. However, using the latest version of Crossover 25, a Windows to Mac translation layer, we can actually run this PC enhanced edition. And on top of all of the additional content and graphics, one of the big advantages is the fact that we have ray tracing baked into this version of the game. And basically, if you have M3 or M4 hardware, then we have access to ray tracing hardware. And this even runs through crossover as well. Now, the game lighting does look substantially different. However, we're taking a pretty huge hit on frame rate, especially considering the number of translation layers at work here. So what I decided to do was to turn the ray tracing setting all the way from ultra down to normal. And this gave us a much more playable frame rate of about 45 or 250 FPS. Not bad considering that ray tracing has a very substantial overhead. So it's really up to you which version that you want to play. If you want to see a tutorial video on how to get Crossover 25 working, make sure to click on the link in the description. Next, we're going to be diving into some Windows gaming on the M3 Ultra. But before we do so, we should probably be aware of issues with running certain Windows games on the Ultra chips of the past. For example, the Windows versions of Cyberpunk 2077 and Hogwarts Legacy ran much slower than their equivalent counterparts of the same generation Max chips. I tested this out myself with the M2 Ultra, which was getting single digit frame rates at the time, even though my M1 Max MacBook Pro could easily achieve much higher frame rates. And the theory behind it at the time was the fact that because the Ultra chip is composed of two Max chips fused together, that this causes some kind of scheduling issue. User Cabin Slip says it's probably due to thread locking issues causing unusually poor performance. Now on a game like Hogwarts I Legacy, I was experiencing issue. issues like once again on the M3 Ultra. I wasn't exactly sure what it was. It seemed that no matter what graphics setting I tried, I was also getting about 38 FPS. This is at 1080p Ultra with FSR set to Ultra Performance. Here I've changed the graphics to medium preset and basically no change. And here I've tried it with the Ultra preset with FSR 2 set to off and we're still running at 39 FPS for some reason. I also tested out the Windows version of Cyberpunk 2077 running at 1080p high, and this runs a lot better than it did on the M2 Ultra. However, it doesn't quite feel right. It should be getting much better performance, especially with 60 GPU cores in play here, especially as the 1080p high benchmark only gives 72 FPS. On the same benchmark on my M3 Max, I'm getting 63. And also when I tested out my M4 Max at 1080p Ultra, we were getting 79 FPS. However, it doesn't quite feel right. It should be getting much better performance, especially with 60 GPU cores in play here. I only ever saw this issue with Windows games being run on the Ultra, so take the following benchmarks with a grain of salt. 
So next Windows game that we're looking at is Red Dead Redemption 2, which finally works through D3D Metal 2.1 on the newest version of Crossover 25, which just released. So here we're running at 1080p on the Ultra preset. So this game is obviously one of the most requested games to be working on the Apple Silicon Mac. And finally, we have good performance thanks to all of Apple's work developing the latest patch to D3D Metal 2.1 which now allows us to work pretty well on Apple Silicon hardware. So there are actually some graphical issues with the shadows, but this is only really most noticeable in the snow levels. In the main campaign, in the towns and cities, it actually seems to work fine. We're getting a very decent frame rate in these kind of open world areas. Here, this is the benchmark running, and the game is very much playable on the M3 Ultra through this translation layer. The benchmark eventually gives an average frame rate of 71 FPS, and hopefully the performance of this game through translation layers continues to improve over time. So next we're looking at The Last of Us Part 1. So this is the remake of the first game, and this is the recent kind of Sony port, which was ported over to Windows, and we're running it through Crossover 25. We've set the graphics onto 4K high graphics preset, and FS SR3 is upscaling on um, performance mode. So it means that we're running the equivalent of a 1080p image. And in this instance, we've also got frame generation turned on. So this uses algorithms to basically insert brand new frames between the ones that's generated by the games, massively increasing frame rate as well, but it can introduce latency. Thankfully, at a relatively high frame rate, this does feel pretty good. However, you might want to turn off frame generation to see what the genuine rendered performance is like. So predictably, we're getting about half of that frame rate. So we're running about 35 to 40 FPS. Of course, if you wanted to get better genuine frame rates, just turn down the resolution even more and it'll still look pretty good. And I'm really glad that this particular Windows game can now run on a Mac through this translation layer. It is easily one of the most requested games that's finally been made available to play on Apple Silicon hardware. However, there is one issue with the port, which is the fact that it looks like there's a pretty substantial memory leak. So if you look at the metal HUD on the top right, the RAM usage keeps going up and up. So eventually this will become unplayable. Hopefully there'll be a fix for this in the future. So the next game we're looking at is Uncharted 4. So this is another Naughty Dog game running on the same engine. It's slightly older, so we're able to push the settings a little bit harder. And just like The Last of Us, the game world looks absolutely amazing, even though we're running through this translation layer, easily hitting 80 plus FPS at 4K ultra settings with FSR 2 set to quality mode upscaling. Now there are some minor audio issues which you can fix by changing the output mode to spatial. This also fixes the problem in The Last of Us Part 1. Now again, like The Last of Us, we do have a substantial issue out. with memory like usage. So here it looks like another memory leak with the same game engine. On the top right, you can see we're hitting 41 gigabytes of memory. And this basically just climbs up and up and up. So the longer you play, the more RAM you're gonna actually be consuming. So with a 96 gigabyte machine like this, it doesn't matter as much as say on something lower end. However, every machine is gonna hit a memory limit at some point. So like The Last of Us Part 1, I really hope that they discover how to fix this memory leak issue. It doesn't just affect this game, there are other titles too, like Jedi Survivor, which also suffers from a similar issue. They did manage to fix it with Red Dead Redemption 2 when you try to run it through 1D3D, it would continue to use RAM way more than the D2D Metal version. So hopefully there is a way to fix this problem because otherwise this game works beautifully on the Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra chip. Anyway, that is my look at gaming on the Mac Studio M3 Ultra. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.